every time we talk about ICT, we are talking about ICT assets in the name of hardware and software. ICT assets talk about software and hardware. We are not looking at them as the very, very physical assets like what we have in our houses. We are looking at hardware and software. So how are we going to acquire this hardware and software? Acquisition uses a number of methods, which I would briefly go through. A number of methods can be used to acquire hardware and software assets. Uh, one being purchasing. We can purchase the hardware and software assets. When I purchase hardware and software, it becomes a permanent property of the organization. We, 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 we use the hardware and software for any activity that is being done in the organization. Uh, but the disadvantage of purchasing is that the hardware and software may become obsolete and we may not have anywhere to take it. Number two talks about renting. The second method of acquiring hardware and software is called renting. In renting, the organization signs a rental contract which specifies the use of the computer system. Renting is expensive when looked at from a long-term perspective, but it's cheaper when uh, we are looking at it from a short-term perspective. But the benefit of renting is that the organization will not suffer from the problem of obsolescence. Number three, the method number three is leasing. In leasing, uh, the organization signs a contract that will allow them to use the hardware and software without limitations. If, if I sign a lease contract, I can use the hardware and software uh, for any function uh, like impl implementing the system. I can still use them for training users. The use of the hardware and software is not restricted. It's not like in renting where the use of the hardware and software is restricted. Now leasing uh, although it is preferred by many organizations, the lease contracts are very long. And in case the hardware or the software becomes obsolete, it might be very difficult to revoke that particular contract. These are the methods that we can use to acquire the ICT assets. Then we have what we call the procedure for acquiring ICT assets the procedure for acquiring ICT assets. Uh, we, we don't just walk into a shop and say, give me this hardware or give me this software. There is a particular procedure that organizations must follow. The first point in the procedure is where we are talking about uh, invitation to tender document. Invitation to tender. The ITT. The organization that requires the hardware and software or the members of the development team will prepare an invitation to tender contract, an invitation to tender notice rather. This notice is communicated to the potential suppliers via different media methods. It could be through television, it could be through newspapers, it could be through the radio. Now the ITT document has some content. It is telling the potential vendors about the type of hardware and software required, uh, the, the deadline for submitting the tenders, uh, the, the volume of data that will be used uh, for the development of the system, and also the quality of output expected when developing a system. Or it's talking about still when you're looking at hardware and software, it's looking at the address of the organization that wants that particular uh, asset. Now, after the tender document is prepared, the various suppliers, that is the second point, the various suppliers will respond. They have read it in the newspaper, then they write, uh, they, they, they look at the deadline for submission, the mode of submission, they prepare a document, then they send it to the organization that wants the assets. Now, what is included in the supplier response document, which is actually the second document in the acquisition of assets. The supplier response document should provide the name of the supplier. It should provide the duration that the supplier has been in business. For how long has the supplier been in business? Maybe four years or maybe less. It should define the financial stability of the supplier. 
based on the assets that the supplier has. It, the financial stability is going to convince the organization that is acquiring the assets that in case the assets fail, the supplier can be able to compensate. It could talk about uh, the after sales services. We call them after sales services provided by the suppliers. Uh, what, what do you mean by after sales services? After, if, assuming I'm the supplier, after I've supplied the software and the hardware, in case they fail, then am I, am I going to maintain them? At what cost or at, at what subsidized cost? Or is it, is it free? Or maybe I, I, I'm using uh, the hardware and software. Am I going to provide some basic training to the expected users of these particular assets? That is another uh, content that must be given in the supplier response document. It is very important for the suppliers to give the quoted price. How much are they going to sell the hardware and software? Now, after the organization receives that supplier response document, the organization looks at, we look at the third point in the procedure, that is evaluation of the supplier. So many people have submitted their tenders. We, we only need one. So we evaluate the supplier documents based on what we have in our, uh, in our requirements, the benchmark. What we're saying is that we have listed that this is what we are supposed to get and the supplier has given us this. So we compare like the prices. Maybe our price is about 40,000. That is what we want to spend. A supplier has quoted 70, another one has quoted 50, another one has quoted 45, 35. So we take the range and we evaluate the supplier response documents and choose the, 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 the appropriate supplier. Or if you want to, we choose the appropriate suppliers. Then once we choose the appropriate suppliers, we go to the fourth point, which talks about uh, preparation of the tendering contract. We have already chosen the supplier, and now we are entering into a contract with the supplier whom we have chosen. And then we say, this is what we want you to supply us with. Now that tells us about uh, the acquisition of ICT assets.